I've decided to finally put a radio in the CRX, not because I need the music or anything. In fact, I actually don't mind driving without music. It's just that uh, putting a radio and speakers in it really makes the car feel a little bit more complete. I'm tired of driving around and seeing that empty hole in the dash. So I know progress has been pretty slow on the CRX, so I feel like something as simple as a radio and speaker install uh, just makes me feel like I'm actually getting some work done. What the f I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this Every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement The top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown Get in my way and to be put down It ain't your place All this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it The noose if it's some loose shit A stupid I've decided to remove the antenna because I'm not going to be using it. If I am listening to music in the CRX, it's going to be whatever is on my iPod. Uh, the nice thing about the CRX is that it's kind of like a time capsule for me because my first car was a CRX, so there's a lot of uh, nostalgia, if you will, behind it. And it just makes me feel like I could go back in time whenever I'm driving a car. And for that reason, I don't want to listen to any current music. I don't want to listen to any of the things that's going on in the world right now on the radio. I just want to get in the car, enjoy it, and listen to my selection of music. And like I said, my own little bubble, my own little time capsule. Plus, I think uh, it just makes the car look a little bit cleaner by just putting a block off plate out here. Now there is a gasket for this block off plate but good luck finding that. So here I am applying a little bit of a dielectric grease to try to prevent some moisture or water from getting inside of here. It's not a big issue because I mainly keep the car in the garage so I'm not too worried about it. And here I found out that the threads were actually kind of mangled up for the screw so I just ran a tap in it and fixed all of that right up. And uh, I was able to put the screw in without any problems now. Now as far as a gasket for this thing, it looks like I'm just going to have to buy like a small sheet of rubber or something and make my own gasket. It should turn out well, I'm not really worried about it. Coronavirus! Since it's pretty much impossible to find a new emergency brake handle, I'm going to have to work with what I have and try to fix this one up and make it usable until I could find a decent one. Now the plan for this is to use the two part epoxy to cover up all of the voids and the pitting on the handle to 
to try to make the surface come out smooth after I sand it. So here I am putting on this glove to try to see what it will look like once it's done. And a pro tip, don't Google how to put on a rubber. The sandpaper I had wasn't aggressive enough so I had to use a file to try to knock this stuff down because it's a lot tougher than I expected it to be. Uh, but that was an epic fail. As you can see the epoxy just tore right off and it actually took chunks of the handle with it. Uh, just goes to show how deteriorated the handle is. So at that point I just grabbed the handle and the file and I just went directly at the handle with the file to smooth it in out. And I stopped at my local hardware store and picked up a a uh, can of plasti dip and i wanted to get the actual container you know where it's just like full and you could just like dip things into it but i couldn't find it so i had to settle for the spray can and after about five or six coats of it it turned out halfway decent Here I have a master cylinder brace that I've had for some time. I just haven't installed it because technically it doesn't fit on my car anymore. I upgraded my master cylinder and brake booster to that of a Integra part. And because of that it no longer fits. There's no space for the plunger. So it looks like I'm going to have to modify that part in order to fit the car. But first I have to deal with all this uh, rusty crap. Now this 10 millimeter is pretty much rounded off and rusted in place so I'm going to use this to heat up the area and I'm actually going to use a socket that's made for extracting rounded off nuts and it seemed to work pretty good as you can see here's that socket and after I tried this method it came out without a problem. All of this stuff is just fluid film that I sprayed a while ago on top of the existing rust. With the part mocked up you can see how there is no space for that plunger to be installed. So it's why I'm going to have to cut this bracket, modify it and just kind of make it work. The plan is to cut right here and just cut all the way across and then cut right here on top and I'm just going to move this whole section inward and just basically give myself a little bit more clearance. Um, so essentially I'm just taking a chunk out and welding it back together and unfortunately I have the world's crappiest welder which is a Harbor Freight like a hundred dollar unit. It's I know I'm a bad welder but I'm not nor I'm not this bad okay it really is a welder <laughs> so I'm gonna put all my blame right there um, but it'll be enough to get the job done it's just not gonna look pretty and the original design is to have two nuts one on each side to tighten it up and I want to go ahead and weld one nut on the back side so we could kind of eliminate that As you can see, I don't even have a proper welding helmet. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, I did forget to put on my welding gloves and eventually I did switch over to them. So here it is after a lot of grinding. It's not pretty, but it looks like it's going to hold. So this is the game plan right here to go ahead and weld 
that back together and you can see now we are going to have the clearance that we need to install the plunger. Now before anyone says anything I'm just going to go ahead and say it first. I know I should not be welding right here because there's a ton of junk laying around and there's a high risk of something catching on fire. But it is what it is so. And now we can do a quick test fit. I've decided to try to spray paint the part since I pretty much destroyed what I think is a powder coat. I've decided to give it an actual clear coat since I think it'll help protect a little bit more and ah, the sounds of Chicago. And of course I got a run in the clear coat as you can see. I was kind of expecting that because I was trying to get everything done as fast as possible so I could put this video together. but uh. Oh, another thing I did is, you see, I put a slot in the back of the screw right here, and that gives me something to actually adjust the plunger with. Because with the new design that I have with the welded on nut, there's really nothing to adjust it with. So that really helps. I could just put a flathead screwdriver on the back side now. Now, the thing that sucks is, I knew this was going to happen, is once you start putting the nuts and bolts on it, it's going to pretty much take off the paint wherever that nut or bolt goes. The only thing that really resists that is the powder coat. Uh, so I was expecting it and sure it did happen. Here's the original nut that came off and I let it sit in some uh, rust dissolver overnight. It came out halfway decent. Now I do plan to kind of redo this entire bracket in the future. Uh, you know, get the paint right. Uh, no, no runs in the clear coat. And uh, maybe even fix the pinholes that are from the welding that didn't really get covered up too well. So just basically overall do a better job next time. Uh, like I said, it was pretty much crunch time and I was trying to do it as quickly as possible to put this video together.